we are he here once again in Exopolitics TV with an update from independent scientist Loren Murray from Berkeley, California. Welcome. Oh, hello, Alfred. Nice to do another interview with you. Um, as I understand it, today we'll be covering <clears throat> updates on Fukushima, uh, environmental radiation levels uh, in the U.S. and in Japan currently, and increases in the death rates. Um, I would just like to mention, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, that uh, we've been spending a great deal of time prior to this interview, which was uh, recorded on October 2nd, 2011, and there appears to be outside interference uh, with Ms. Murray's uh, video uh, internet uh, system. So if the sound or the focus go bad during this interview, it's not due to technical difficulties that we at Exopolitics have. It's directly due to interference by unknown parties, probably uh, from military intelligence or affiliated law enforcement agencies in the U.S. who do not want this information to come out. Now, having said that, uh, Loren, let's get back to what the environmental radiation levels are from the Fukushima false flag operation of March 13, 2011, and what the increases in the death rates are since that event? Well, it's horrendous, and it's not being reported, and people should know about this. So uh, I've collected a lot of very, very crucial information for the public, and I hope this uh, helps to empower them to find out more and also to protect themselves. And thank you very much for doing this interview and all the interviews that we've done on this horrific weapon system. Um, I think that uh, Professor Frank Dalton uh, pretty much summed it up in a, in a recent article he was quoted in. He's a professor of applied linguistics at Rio. Ryukoku University in Kyoto, Japan. This is in the southern part of Japan. And he says, quote, In a really tragic sense, Japan has lost its future. I can't believe this is going on. This is a nightmare that you think you could just wake up from. Everything changed for me that afternoon when the house started shaking and I don't know about the future anymore. And Alfred, uh, this is a young man married to a Japanese woman with five, four small children, and he is evacuating his wife and children probably to Australia, and he said, but I will probably have to stay here because I won't be able to get a job anywhere else. So essentially, it's a uh, death sentence for him. And he's willing to do that to save his wife and children. So um, I'd like to talk about the excess deaths in the U.S. updated for March 13th to September 3rd. And I'm going to start with a report on beta radiation in the United States following the Fukushima disaster and a report on beta levels in the U.S. Uh, has established the background levels from 2010, that's one year ago, before the Fukushima disaster, and that would have been the average radiation levels in 129 cities in the U.S., and this is all EPA data. And so they look at the levels from 2010 for the same time period in order to assess and to monitor the increases 
in environmental accumulated Fukushima radiation throughout the United States, and, uh, and they pick 129 cities. Uh, so this is since March 11, 2011. For each time period, the beta level increased in all 129 cities many times the 2010 level for the same period. So if we look at March 15th through 31st when all those explosions were happening in the reactors, buildings, um, during that period, March 15th to 31st, the, the levels of, of beta radiation they were measuring were 5.09 times higher than last year. So that is a huge increase. Uh, for April 1st to 30th, the background levels, I'm sorry, the levels uh, measured in 129 U.S. cities were 2.01 times higher than background one year ago for the same period. And for May 1st to 23rd, the background level, uh, I'm sorry, the um, the the increase was 1.15 times background one year ago uh, in 2010. So uh, that's really bad. And every city, 129 cities, all of them showed increases. That means that if there isn't any place in the U.S. that wasn't contaminated. Um, the March multiplier effects, those are called the multiplier effects how many times higher than one year ago for the same time period. So the March multiplier effects were uh, the highest uh, reported through May um, and also very high in some particular cities with significant increases in all cities that were tested. So the highest ones were Tucson, Arizona, which was 18.2 times higher than the same time period last year in 2010. Eureka, California, it was the highest in the United States with a 53.05 times increase. That's a huge amount. San Diego was 11.42 times higher than one year ago. Honolulu, Hawaii was uh, 23.98 times higher, and Salt Lake City, Utah was 16.77 times higher. The top beta increases in 15 cities were Phoenix, Salt Lake City, Tucson, San Diego, Honolulu, Riverside, California, Orlando, Florida, Hilo, Hawaii, Las Vegas, Nevada, San Francisco, California, Phyllis, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Sacramento, California, Jacksonville, Florida, and Idaho Falls, Idaho. And um, for uh, March 15th to 31st, we had a huge amount of rainfall. We have an average of 12 to 14 inches a year in, in California. And uh, for March 15th to 31st, there was 8 inches of rainfall in Eureka. And that might explain why they had 53 times higher radiation levels than a year ago. Um, in Los Angeles, it was 3.8 times higher. Um, I'm sorry, 3.8 inches in Los Angeles of rain, 4.1 inches in Sacramento, 4.72 inches in San Francisco. So we had, um, in two weeks, basically in San Francisco, we had uh, the uh, amount of rain that we would get in, in uh, four to six months here. So... 4.02 inches in Orlando, Florida, and 6.53 inches in Hilo. So Hilo got a lot of rain, too. 
3.38 inches in Portland and 3.58 inches in Olympia, Washington. So uh, that's pretty amazing because Olympia, Washington, um, in that region, they get over 150 inches a year. That's why they have a, a temperate rainforest there. And yet in San Francisco, we got more than they did, and um, uh, we shouldn't have had that much rain at all at that time of year. There were also differences in the amount of dry deposition. So this is air masses moving through without rainfall or snow and still depositing high levels of radiation. So the highest uh, dry deposition happened in Arizona, Utah, California, Hawaii, and Florida. In some states, uh, compared to wet deposition, and that was in California, very high rainfall, Hawaii, Florida, Washington, and Oregon. So the radiation levels on the ground depend on two factors, the environmental contamination. It depends on weather and on geography. So apparently, these levels uh, seem to depend on the rainfall, although not completely. So um, according to CNN, radioactive beef has leaked into the consumer market over in Japan. This is from the CNN blog. I can only see this spreading to other countries through the oceans. If you remember just recently, the U.S. government said that it is going to stop monitoring the fish for radiation. So much for the seafood lovers. And uh, the, uh, the whole food supply is contaminated and being contaminated. And it's contaminated with a cumulative effect because the radiation continues being released from Japan. It's being continually um, accumulated in the global environment and more severely in North America and the Northern Hemisphere. So um, now we're going to go to the excess death rates to see what the effects of this increase in all cities in the United States of radiation that has been reported from EPA data. Now this data from the Centers for Disease Control does not include infant mortality. Uh, that is reported separately. Uh, however, as it was reported in late June by Dr. Jeanette Sherman, I've worked with her for, for 11 years, infant mortality rates in West Coast cities from Washington State to California have increased 35% between March 11th and June 18th. And here in Berkeley, where I live, that represents the death of about 18 babies in, California, in, in Berkeley uh, between March 11th and um, June 18th. Um, the infant mortality increased even more to 45% in Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, and Spokane. The increase in excess deaths in the general population would be expected to be lower than for infant mortality because infants are much more susceptible to radiation exposure, especially at low levels. Uh, I mean, even at very low levels. So, um, the U.S. regions, and these are groups of states, uh, which is called a region by the Centers for Disease Control, uh, showed significant increases in mortality since March 13, uh, 2011. And I'm going to uh, give you the PDF uh, to put in your article uh, in the examiner, and then people can actually go to the reports and read it themselves. Uh, there's also a CDC weekly update uh, uh, by state and by cities. And that gives the raw numbers of deaths, but um, 
this has to be massaged uh, with statistics and so forth.